good evening to all the participants uh, to all the participants who served as uh, you know keying in on chat uh, good evening to all of you uh, we welcome all of you to this uh, webinar by mr abhinandan bhattacharya long awaited webinar uh, as getting mails uh, requesting for uh, the links and i had to uh, request teachers to hold on uh, for this morning so i'm sure there is a lot of enthusiasm and also a great deal of interest in attending the webinar uh, without further ado let me take this opportunity to introduce mr abhinandan uh, mr abhinandan bhattacharya is currently teaching english language and literature at the caie and ibdp levels at jc jbcn international school oshivara mumbai he has several professional merits to his credit the recent one being his certification as a national geographic educator he is a published writer a passionate traveler and an avid reader he is a resource person for colens learning and also a reviewer for colens academic resources for caie english without further ado mr abhinandan over to you thank you so much mr srikant good evening good afternoon wherever you are all the participants today yes we have uh, come over here we are assembled today this evening to understand a little more about uh, comprehension i'm sure most of us must be you know uh, incorporating all these strategies which i'll be sharing uh, eventually in in the session today but uh, more than that more than making it a one way kind of a communication today i really want to you know know from each one of you, you know uh, to to engage uh, your interaction because that's exactly what we are looking out for so um, i believe the chat box is open to all of you you can use the uh, chat box freely and at any given point of time you want to have a question and definitely after some uh, some slides i'll be uh, asking mr shikant to you know, follow up in the chat box and share uh, any kind of questions and definitely we're going to have a lot of you know a q and a rounds today when we are going to solve the uh, uh, queries because i know the examinations are now at the door and uh, in such unprecedented times we really want to uh, get an idea what is what so uh, comprehension and summary i think this is my um, fourth webinar uh, for the igcsc uh, components with collins i have already uh, conducted one session with a detailed comprehensive session on descriptive writing one on narrative writing one on writers effects uh, those are pretty challenging ones and lots to glean from those sessions and this is uh, more on the simple lines of the exercises that you have in paper one that's comprehension the question short and a uh, long answer type questions and uh, summary writing i mean apparently it seems to be quite easy but then when we work our way through it uh, and we go through the exercises we feel that no there are certain nuances that we need to understand and we need to you know uh, uh, interpret them as per the exam expectations right so what does the webinar hold for us today we will understand uh, some of the approaches that are necessary to answer the short and long type questions now what do we mean by short and long type questions so this is centered around the, the basic idea of the command terms you know the, the command terms uh, are understood in the right context i think uh, the battle is won so we will understand how the command terms will need to be explored and interpreted in the right context so that we write the answer appropriately yeah that's it understanding command terms is extremely crucial so what do we mean by when we say i identify or when when, when the uh, examiner asks me explain or just pick out or quote what exactly is expected out of a student or a 15 or 16 year old under exam conditions right so those things are important to be understood how to structure a summary response that's the second part of the webinar and um, we'll understand the use of language and style for a summary writing response now uh, we need to be you know this sort of controlled and succinct way of writing that the children need to understand otherwise they go on writing and repeat the entire purpose of summary by overshooting the word count and of course finally we will uh, understand the assessment criteria so what are the assessment criteria each bank descriptor what does it you know entail and what does it ask the learner to do 
let's see. Well, this is a, a quick checklist for understanding uh, about what the paper won for IPCC first hand. So these are our, uh, our assessment or objectives, the AOs. So for reading and writing, of course, we understand. And just for uh, clarity, I have gleaned out certain points over here, certain keywords which uh, are expected by us to understand. So if I may ask the participants on board, see the chat box and help us understand what do we mean by the following words, uh, implicit, explicit, analyze, evaluate, articulate, and comprehension. Well, let's see. Waiting for answers on the chat box. Okay, uh, implied means hidden meaning. Implicit means not the literal meaning. Uh, implicit uh, means reading between lines. Explicit uh, means obvious meaning. Explicit means open. Explicit means outward meaning. Implicit means interference meaning. Inference meaning, I'm sorry. Uh, inference meaning. Uh, what is implied? Uh, implied means something to be inferred, whereas uh, explicit is what is written, is just what is written. Analyze means to comment on the author's viewpoint. Okay. Comprehend the question. Uh, explicit is as it appears direct. Analyze, um, okay. Uh, an got, okay. Uh, analyze means to deconstruct and break it into parts. Uh, Okay. Evaluate is to argue. Yeah. Okay, so a okay. lot of answers, a lot of answers. Great, great. So I'll stop over there and I'll ask because something I thought uh, something got my attention. Something very interesting got my attention. Someone mentioned analyze means to comment. So uh, do we think anal analysis is actually comment or writing a comment on? There's a little difference. But this is something, again, we need to understand. So when we say... Uh, Commentary. You're commenting on the writer's uh, expressions. You're commenting on the writer's use of language. Uh, does it actually mean that I am analyzing? So what does analysis mean? So when we talk about writer's effect and when we talk about the style analysis, so what are we expecting, basically? So, uh, someone has written, analyze is to present your perception. Analyze is to find... Uh, with the help, uh, analyzes to look at pros, cons, and dissect the style, mm -hmm. and uh, analyzes to look for writer's choice of words, uh, look for an idea, and support your findings from the text, is what uh, someone believes analyzes. Okay. Uh, articulate, uh, how the author uh, creates an idea uh, is analysis. And breaking yeah. down different ideas is analysis, is what Ms. Shraddha says. Oh, yes, yes, that's uh, quite right. So we talk about the authorial choices, you know, the author's ideas, the author's choices, and what would be the you know subsequent reader's response. So that's analysis. But commentary is precisely on the stylistic features, the, the layout, the structure, and how the entire text has been uh, you know dealt with. So there is a little difference uh, between analysis and commentary. Of course, and analysis also entails explanation and evaluation. So those are the elements that we will discuss in full. Uh, evaluate, articulate, and eventually comprehension. So uh, these are the command term. These are the basic uh, concepts that we will need to keep in mind when we are, you know, progressing and we are teaching a uh, comprehension skills. You know, we all know what is comprehension. We all know there will be a passage. The basic understanding is there will be questions asked and we have to answer the question. Simple. But well, uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, my personal experience has also uh, given me an understanding that at times children do, uh, they you know, make a lot of mistakes with respect to comprehension. Precisely because of the fact they are nervous or they are clueless how much to write for the response 
at times they don't understand the question because in IGCSE, first language English again, these comprehension questions are objective. You can score full marks in these sections. Yet the learners really know the struggle to score those required and necessary marks. So why? Let's see. So over here, I have just you know, uh, illustrated an understanding so where do we need to use comprehension skills in our IGCSE curriculum, in our IGCSE first language English paper? First of all, uh, you have something in paper one, question one, uh, from question one to one A to question one E, wherein you have all those short answer and long answer questions. Ideally questions one A to C, they are short answer questions, okay? And question one D and E, those are long answer type, long questions, when you need to explain, and those are three mark questions. So the, the student is expected to write with sufficient details. A little bit of elaboration is necessary over there, because you find at times, many of our learners, they are not able to understand how much to write. It's a three mark question, and the question command term says explain, and they're not able to explain it properly. They're just quoting the words of pages from the text and somehow just leaving some loosely held standalone ideas. So uh, which definitely will not help them win um, any additional scores over there. Definitely we need uh, good comprehension skills and that, that will be discussing in the second half of the webinar today when we talk about summary writing responses. So uh, in the question paper for FLE, text B is entirely dedicated to a summary writing task. You have question one F, which is a summary writing task. After that, for question two D, which is a writer's effects question, a language task, that over there, again, we need to read and comprehend the meaning of the text, comprehend the question, what has been asked. This is another area where children often no uh, mistake, understanding the question, and then they write something which is not expected. For example, in the writer's effect question, you know, the question predominantly asks paragraph so-and-so talks about blah, 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 elements. Now the student under exam condition is supposed to be finding out the words and phrases from that particular paragraph which justify or which justify that particular element which has been asked in the question. They pick up randomly similes, metaphors, or examples of image, which they're supposed to do so, do, uh, you know, just indiscriminately. But they're supposed to be finding the words which will do justice to the uh, question, the, the key idea expressed in the question. So there comes comprehension skills. We also have question number three in paper one, which is a transformative text type question, and also it's uh, called extended response to reading. So overall, we understand how important reading is. So with first language English, we do have our learners competing with the native language uh, uh, competency levels. And exactly, we need to equip them with all these skills. Otherwise, they come across a word. I don't say that they will come across over the top, high in vocabulary always, but then they will necessarily come across language expressions and ideas and phrases and word choices in the examination paper, in the insert, which be of reasonably good quality and of a higher order idea. Okay, so children need to be abreast with all those uh, elements of language. And definitely uh, for paper two, we have uh, the directed writing task based on two texts, text A and text B, shorter texts, uh, from which the learners are expected to glean ideas, facts and opinions and thoughts to support their response for the directed writing task, which is ideally an argumentative or a discursive uh, genre, okay? This is a simple graphical representation or it's a, a box where you can see panels which talks about the reading skills. Uh, when we talk about the development of comprehension skills, there are certain things that we also need to understand using our background knowledge, our ability to ask questions. Uh, as someone mentioned, you know, when you're reading about the keywords and to answer what is expected, you need to identify the author's 
purpose, the author's choices, the writer's uh, the development of uh, context and the purpose and the tone overall. So as we are reading, you know, the reading skills basically encompass all these parameters. So we are expected to identify the main idea. We're expected to recognize the sequence of thoughts because that's again very important at times uh, for summary writing or maybe for some question you are asked, what are uh, the events or in which order did the events take place? So over there, the chronology might be important to recognize the cause and effect. Okay, these binaries are again important to understand the advantages, the disadvantages, the drawback, the limitations, the merits, the demerit, the cause and the effect. So these are binaries. So to recognize the binaries uh, in a reading material is again something which will help us to understand how sharp our reading skills are. Make inferences as so many of us had agreed that, of course, you know, all of us agreed that making inferences is implicit understanding the, the connotations. You know, that's again important. So the implied meaning, reading between the lines. When you're reading, you're just not superficially reading as you read a newspaper, okay? Uh, or just a storybook when you're on a leisurely trip to the hills. So you are not reading like that over here. You make predictions. So as you read, you tend to make, you make an analysis, you tend to make some kind of predictions. You they tend to understand, okay, how can the plot develop further and what can be the next you know, ideas expressed in the plot. So making predictions, predictions also important, um, you know, what do you say, a skill uh, on the part of a reader when you are reading. Summarize, of course, we're talking about summarize, uh, summary writing at length. Uh, the ability to distinguish between fact and opinion, of course, uh, right from our lower secondary checkpoint levels, we teach our learners how to distinguish between fact and opinion because that exactly uh, will help us to understand the question. So if they ask about give two facts from the text. So I should know uh, that these two points that I've lifted from the text are facts and not opinions. So that difference is again important. And of course, by IGCAC grade nine and 10, most of us are uh, you know, completely training our learners on these counts. Finding facts and details, statistical data, facts, information, and that's exactly how we thereafter teach them the difference between the text types, right? Whether it's an informative, it's a news, re news report, or a speech. Recognize, then you compare and contrast. So of course, if there are two texts, basically you have these kind of questions often asked in the lower secondary checkpoint, and of course in uh, uh, paper two, uh, directed writing when you are supposed to be making some kind of analysis and evaluation. So that's a key word in paper to directed writing question. So how do you evaluate? You definitely do some kind of comparison and contrast of the ideas and then glean out your ideas and points and then evaluate on the same, right? As for the question. Making connections. As you're reading, you go about making connections and understand and identify whether this makes sense, whether it justifies my question word or it justifies my response or not. And how are the if, if the story that I'm reading is a fiction text? How are the characters, you know, uh, interlinked? Or how are they connected? What are the relationship between the characters? Because those kind of you know understanding and kalyans when you uh, establish, it really becomes easy for you to understand the question and write your answer effectively. Visualize the ability to visualize is very important. So that's exactly how uh, where you know the, the role of imagery comes in. And you read it for clarity. Of course, under exam, though IGC doesn't give you any extra reading time as such, but then you can definitely reread a part of the text on the basis of which you're supposed to be answering the question just for your own clarity. So these are all different parts of reading text, reading skills. And of course, adjust your pacing. Pacing is the, the speed of your reading. So reading skills also until how fast a reader you are or how slow a reader you are. So that determines whether you're able to comprehend well, comprehend adequately and answer uh, the questions properly. This is a quick uh, diagrammatic representation of the strategies that we can use for reading comprehension. We can reflect, we can reread, we can evaluate. You can, you can actually uh, look at this particular uh, visual uh, and look at this particular illustration in any manner. There is no standard manner that you can start 
you have to go clockwise, you have to go anti-clockwise. No, you can actually develop all these ideas and pick them up randomly and understand how they can be faced because it depends on your ability to, uh, to, to annotate the question and to annotate the, uh, the, the text as a matter of fact. So you can ask questions, of course, that's a part of your comprehension skills. You can synthesize chunks of information, take down notes, preview it, summarize it, monitor uh, the entire text for some kind of understanding, develop a mental image because of course when you're reading and trying to uh, write and cu curate a response for your writer's effects, of course you're creating the mental image. Otherwise you'll not be able to deliver the right kind of language. You will not be able to write your response with uh, the required articulation and sophistication. Okay, so these are just an overview of ideas which can go into making your comprehension skills much better. Okay, now we have a good and a quick activity time. Uh, this, uh, this text has been taken from the Collins IGCAC First Language English uh, course book, the student book. Uh, so let's read the text quickly. This is a short uh, 32 lines uh, extract. And that's the best thing I like about the Collins book. So they, help you to understand in bits and pieces and throw the questions in a manner which will help you to you know, uh, have a better classroom practice, a quick classroom practice. So let's see. I'll read the text. Typing town. Penang and Ipo are now hot tourist destinations in Malaysia, but the road between them is strewn with small towns, each with their own charms and history. Typing is perhaps the most storied of them all. Once a wealthy tin mining hub, it saw bloody feuds and rapid development in the 19th century. British colonialists set up base here, living behind churches, gardens, and neoclassical buildings. These days, Taiping defies its eventful past, settled in the sleepy yet steadfast rhythms of a market town. But what a market it is. To magnificent wooden arcades dating back over 130 years, host fruit sellers by day and hawkers by night. Food is cheap and delicious. Try local dishes such as ketu, ketu goreng, wok fried noodles with fish balls, and chi chong fun, rice noodles drenched in spicy sauce and sesame seeds. On the fringes of town, the lake gardens attract joggers and cyclists to sprawling green grounds lined with ancient rain trees. You can rent a bike to find the most unique spots. But for wilder nature, head just a bit further toward the jungle and take a dip in the waterfall at Burmese Pool. If you are staying more than a day, hike up Bukit Larut, also known as Maxwell Hill. To get to typing, take the ETS train from Kuala Lumpur Central. The three hour journey passes through beautifully rugged limestone landscapes. Lewis Hotel offers mid range hotel rooms in the town center from 20 pounds, that's around $25 a night. Now, this text has been taken from the source, which has been quoted over here from Undiscovered Southeast Asia by Ling Lo, and it was published in the Guardian uh, web, website, web page. I'll give 30 seconds for all the participants on board to just go through the text to register certain elements, the facts, the opinions, the data, the information, the names, because the next slide, there are questions. And the, those, those set of questions will be open to all of you to answer. Twenty more seconds. Okay, so now we have these questions. Let's see. What is the adjective? Hot. Okay, so uh, being just used to describe in this sentence. So the sentence is, Penang and Epo are now hot tourist destinations in Malaysia. So that's your sentence. So what is the adjective hot being used to describe uh, in this sentence, in the responses. 
yeah extremely popular popular often visited busy and popular much visited okay great much sort of after visited. yes sort of after often visited you know frequently uh, uh travel to destination or hot spot or a hot that okay those are ideas but yes now i'll i'll rectify myself over here see while while randomly just you no know, uh, unscrupulous thinking about the idea i was giving you the meaning hot spot now hot spot will be wrong if i say hot spot because when i'm writing the meaning i actually cannot use the same base word to write my meaning so the learners need to be extremely cautious about mindful about this thing okay let's look at the next word uh, how does the word now suggest about penning being hot so when here we had the word now in the same sentence penning and ipo are now hot tourist destination destinations in malaysia so how does a particular word now suggest about penning being hot any response currently uh, okay it wasn't before but presently currently currently okay. at present change from past presently these are the answers okay okay so again we talk about the binaries it wasn't earlier it's now so it, there must be some cause which had actually given this effect okay so we have the next question what other phrase in the sentence gives a clue about the context in which the towns are being discussed so i'll take you back to the text the question is what other phrase in the sentence in the same sentence mind you gives a clue about the context in which the towns are being discussed sorry yeah any responses uh, tourist spots tourist destinations okay and uh, yeah what other malaysia uh, okay yes so tourist destinations is a phrase which is absolutely correct the fourth question if the word hot is not describe the temperature of the town what do you think is describing so of course we did mention about that we did talk about that uh, it's describing the the popularity of the two towns how popular they are and how they are frequently visited our uh, destinations during this time okay so now let's uh, move on to the next slide over here these are some of the short type short answer type questions i've taken this from the november 2020 first language english paper 1 let's look at these questions i would like to know from the participants over here how would you expect your learners i mean if you are examiners and if you are evaluating the paper you are marking the paper how would you expect or what kind of response would you expect from the learners for these questions so if we talk about the first question give two reasons why locals believe an ancient race of giants once existed according to the text i know i don't have the text displayed right now that's not necessary over here we are just talking about the approach to the questions the approach to the uh, short answer and long answer questions so any any thoughts from any other participants speak from the text two points should be there perspectives of the locals two okay. phrases in bullet points from the text perfect the first reason is the second is so how do you want your learners to give the answer so that's what I, we are discussing they today. want them to quote from the text yeah or, or do you want the learners to write the first reason reason why local believe or the sec, the two reasons why locals believe an ancient race do you want them to write the entire sentence over there Yeah, just, exactly. That's what one teacher suggested. Yeah. So, is that a query from a teacher? No. Uh, she suggested that we want the students to write it that way. No. So over here, see, this is limited space. Abhinandan, I think you are muted. You are you are muted. Yeah. Is it fine? Am I audible now? Yeah, you are good. Okay. or oh, something is appearing in the center of my screen i don't know how did it appear please move this window away from the shared application okay there is a message i think uh, could you uh, uh, reshare your screen if you could unshare it and reshare 
it just is staying on. Yeah. Is it better now? Is my screen visible to all? Yes, it is. It is. Okay. Great. Oh, thank God. Okay. So over here, no, we are not expecting the learners to write the full sentence at all. If the question asks, give two reasons, just pick up the two reasons, even if they happen to be, you know, the quotations from the text and write them in the dotted lines. That's it. We do not expect the full sentence over here at all because they will be wasting a lot of time otherwise. This question is only of two marks. Two reasons, which is underlined in the question paper, only two reasons. We do not want them to write full sentences at all. So please ensure that they write only the key points, the key words and phrases for the answer. That there will be two dotted lines given. Okay? So it would be a good idea to train the learners to write the responses in bullet points. So maybe in the first uh, dotted line, mark a bullet point and write the first reason. And the second dotted line, mark a second bullet point at the second reason. That's perfectly all right. Okay. The second question over here. Using your own words, explain what the text means by. Now over here, there are two phrases you know, given over here, taken from line number three and one from line number five. Thriving cities and ancient structures. So how do you think we talk about thriving cities over here? Uh... So the questions I think uh, we are getting from teachers. So one second, I just uh, here. Okay, uh, there's one observation here. You are expected to analyze meaning, give uh, denotations, denotations and connotations, then implied meaning of the phrases in complete sentences, simplified meanings. These Absolutely. are the answers. Contextual Perfect. meanings. Perfect. Now. That's perfect. That, that understanding. That and uh, Ms. Shweta is asking if the students can write it in their own words. Of course. It, they have to write in their own words because that's exactly what has been underlined in the question paper. If you okay. observe the opening of the question, using your own word. So over here, if the learners are copying any idea from the text, they will not get marked for this. They have to write the meaning of thriving cities in their own words. Now, one interesting thing to note over here is when they're writing the meaning of thriving cities, it is strongly recommended that they do not use in their explanation or in their, in their, in their, in their explanation of the words, either the word thrive or cities. They cannot use that. Okay, uh, just, a, just a rejoinder. So, yeah. Ms. Shweta is asked uh, that question in respect to uh, the first question. Give two reasons why locals believe. Okay, yeah. No, see, two reasons over here. Uh, it's not specified whether they want to use their own words. So, the learners will not be penalized at all if they lift the words or phrases or the two reasons, even in phrase points, from the text. That's perfectly all right. They won't lose any mark. Okay. I hope I answered that question. Yeah, yeah. And there is uh, one question from Ms. Sindhu Mol. Uh, okay. Ms. Sindhu, uh, what is the marks allotted for? I'm just trying to get this down. Okay. One second. I'm really sorry. The questions are really coming fast okay what is the marks allotted for second question if it is two marks then they have to write the meaning of both the words in each phrase is what she believes there are two marks for each of the sub questions so there are two marks for thriving cities two marks for ancient structures so in this case and uh, there is another question from mazana Okay. Uh, Anna asks, uh, how much time can you spend for uh, spend on two marks? Okay, I don't know if there is a standard answer for that question. You see, again, it depends on the pacing of your reading, right? Uh, if there is any other expert on this panel to answer that question, please go yeah, ahead. Yeah, uh, someone, if you could just, you know, show up your hand 
and uh, maybe we could unmute you. Yeah. Because it depends on how fast you comprehend, how fast you read, and how fast you write the answer. And how much importance you give to it. I'm sorry. What is and that? how much uh, I was saying how much importance you give to those two marks also. Oh yes, these are. I mean, as I mentioned, you know, uh, these are comprehension questions. So question yes. one that is 15 marks, and you can actually score 15 out of 15. And then exactly. question one uh, F, which is a summary writing question, it again carries 15 marks, and you can actually score 15 out of 15. Yes. And not only that, again based on uh, your comprehension skills. In question number two, where you have to find the word meanings from the text and again write your own meanings, they again carry 10 marks in the entire slot. Question two, A to C, there are 10 marks and you can actually score full 10 out of 10. So that's what I'm saying, you know, uh, for comprehension skills development, your paper one is absolutely scoring. Do not let go of these marks because paper two is broadly, and of course it is subjective. You have two chunk of questions 40 marks each. So there, the stakes are higher. But paper one is absolutely scoring. Why would you want to lose out these, you know, little, little marks here and there? And that's exactly why you have to do a lot of, you know, devote a lot of time and attention to answering. <coughs> Sorry, the writer's effects, the, the extended response reading challenge, question number three, which is 25 marks. So you have to do, you know, quick enough answering these questions. And that's exactly why I'm telling you developing the comprehension skills, your fast reading skills, and understanding what this side of the question asks me is very, very important. Okay. So while again answering or explain, my command term over here is explain what the text means by. That means I'm supposed to be understanding the contextual reference of these phrases in the text A that I've read. And explain, explain is my command term. And what, what does explain mean as one of uh, the participants that you mentioned? That you su you're supposed to be writing the meaning and give some kind of a detailed elaboration to it. Okay? You just can't write the word meaning or rather the synonyms over here and uh, get done with that. No, that's not uh, what will be given to Mark score. Okay? Now, this is the next set of questions. Again, over here, we have two different command terms and let's see how. One is a short answer type question. One is a long answer type question. So read it paragraph four. The evidence has dot, 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 artificial origin, that, that uh, paragraph that we're supposed to read. And as I mentioned in the previous slide, read it, rereading techniques, very important. So you have the first question with the command term, identify. Identify two pieces of evidence that the Ecuadorian authorities did not want to believe the findings. So again, this is important. Read the entire question. My, my question asked me, again, it's a two mark question. Identify two pieces of evidence. I am, and the question command term is identify, not explain or describe. That's not my command term. So I will not waste any time writing a full length sentence over here. The two pieces of evidence that the Ecuadorian authorities did not want to believe the findings are no, I am not supposed to waste that much time or space and the, you know, uh, because it's case crunch. Two dotted lines, two marks. It's a two mark question. Just the two pieces of evidence to pick up from the text and write them down over there. It's as simple as that. But to understand the questions are very important. Again, under exam conditions, children, you know, that scenario is such, that obviously nervous, three texts to read, text A and text B, shorter, uh, almost of reasonable length around 600, 700 words, whereas text C itself is of 700 words, 700 to 900 words. So it's a mammoth task. It's not an easy task at the you know at the onset, right? And under exam conditions, so they are under a lot of pressure already. So we need to be mindful to teach them these little tricks, how to go their way out to write the answer in a very smart manner. So identify two pieces of evidence they could author did not want to believe the findings. That to focus on to un for that particular part of the uh, paragraph where the equation authorities did not want to believe the findings and not wanted to believe the findings. Okay. <clears throat> now, the second question is a long answer question. The command term is explain. And the question asks, explain 
while researchers believe that these are man-made pyramids. So over here, explain why. When I when the question when the examiner asks why, naturally and evidently some amount of explanation and detailed elaboration is, is being expected. So that we need to keep in mind. And of course, what are my keywords? Researchers believe man-made pyramids. So I'm going to hunt for why do you think the researchers believe, and I'm going to find the logic over here. Now, over here, for this particular question, it is strongly advisable not to copy paste from the text because it's an explanation question. And as long as you write the explanation in your own words, you get to get the scores. Okay. Let's look at the last question. Uh, this is again an explanation question. This is a three mark question. Okay. Uh, this is for question 1E. So read it paragraph five and the paragraph begins and it's like, furthermore, several other dot, dot, dot leader is buried. So again, using your own words, explain why it is possible that the researchers are wrong in their theories. It's a three mark question, very important because in this section of 15 marks, this is the last question, three marks. So why explain elaboration needed and not just mere mentioning of the reasons. <coughs> Sorry. So it is possible that the researchers are wrong in their theories. They see now over here, this kind of question, can I ask now, uh, what kind of reading skill is being tested of the learner over here? Implicit reading skill or explicit reading skill? Maybe we can have a quick. Implicit. Absolutely. So see, this, this is exactly what we need to explain to our learners. Reading between the lines. Why is it possible that the researchers are wrong in their theories? This might not be explicitly staring in your face from the exam paper, but then I must be in a position to quickly, you know, understand, okay, so in this particular, particular paragraph, the researchers are basically talking about this. And these are the possible reasons, because that's my keyword. Why it is possible the researchers are wrong in their theory. So which are the possible reasons? I have a nose for that. I'll find it out, I'll trace it out, and I'll write my answer paper, okay? So, and this entire exercise, question one, A to E, the 15 marks slot, I think we should not, I, I just, just because someone asked how much time you should spend, okay? So I, I think, I mean, personally, I would, I would train my students to spend not more than 15 to 20 minutes on this section, okay? So that's on text A. There are five questions, 15 marks, only on text A. So I'm focusing for all these set of questions on text A only. I'm not reading text B at all right now, okay? So if you organize your time and your understanding of the question paper in this fashion, I think that will help you to finish the paper in time. And of course, there's no problem. I, I remember initially when this new syllabus was launched in 2018, the, the specimen papers were out. There was a lot of hue and cry about the length of the paper, the learners not able to finish the paper. But believe me, if you give the right amount of practice, my learners are able to finish the paper right on time, rather even before time, with good uh, quality work being produced. So that's exactly how we can actually train our learners. So this is a sample uh, question that I've taken from the November 2020 IBCC uh, First Language English paper. This is a variant uh, one three. So there are three variants. One 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 two one three. This is a one three variant. Now this particular question, question number two A, as I mentioned, so I'm just taking question number two A for our reference because for question two B and C, I've already discussed in the previous uh, slide how you are not supposed to be changing or how you're not supposed to be using the base word that you're asked to write the meaning for and uh, then get away with it. No, that's not possible. Okay, so this one is question number two. Abhinandan, there is one question. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, should I? Yeah. So uh, this is uh, in reference to uh, part two, uh, mm -hmm. where you had mentioned that the student should not lift text from the passage. But will it be okay if the student ends up writing a couple of words that are same or similar to that particular passage? Okay. Now over here, uh, yeah, I'll be I'll be discussing this in the forthcoming slides as well. Yeah, that's a good question. If the couple of words that you're expecting student to lift 
happen to be you know, uh, technical terms or keywords which are extremely necessary for the answer to be mentioned in. That's fine, no problem. Okay? That's perfectly all right. It's a technical term. Uh, some some keyword without which the answer will be uh, incomplete and you cannot write the answer otherwise. That's perfectly all right. Okay, but not the entire chunk of the sentence or the phrase lifted word for word from the text. That will not be appreciated. Okay. <coughs> now, for this question number two, it's based on text C. It's a longer text. It's a fiction text. Okay. So it's a story basically, it's narrative. And you to, uh, it's about 900 words, 600 to 900, 700 to 900 words. Yeah, that's a word range for this particular text. So you read the text and then answer these questions. Now over here, often uh, the mistake that children make is the question says in, in bold typeface, identify a word or phrase from the text which suggests the same idea as the words underlined. So it's very crucial for the learners to realize that I will not you know, end up picking up the word or phrase from the text, which also means for their journey. I will pick up the word or phrase from the text, which only means great hopes. I'll pick up word or phrase from the text, which only means, as in the second sentence, was very hot and strong. Okay, I will only pick up the word or phrase from the text which means overheated and made a high pitched noise. Now this is, now these questions again, as I mentioned, you can score full marks. Ensure, however, that the spellings are correct. If you go wrong in the spelling of the keywords or the technical terms or while, see, this is simply copy pasting. You just have to identify from the, now this is a little challenging, why? Because over, the, over here, you know, they have not specified any line number. They have not made it easy like that. So, you know, okay, Max and Helmut had great hopes for their journey. In bracket, had they written line number three or line number four, then of course it would be so easy, right? For the learners to actually navigate to that particular text on that same line number and just pick up. But no, this is a little challenging. That's why your quick reading skills will need to be employed over here. See, it's on the entire text. It can be anywhere. Great hopes, the word or phrase that, that mean, that means great hopes can be anywhere in the text. But ideally, you know, uh, from my experience, from the, the past paper that I've studied, you know, followed over a couple of years now, uh, they actually ask the meanings in a sequence. They don't just randomly pick up, okay? But then we never know. We need to, you know, prepare our learners from every, uh, Quarter, right? So this is exactly what uh, the word meanings will have to be written as. Do not write full sentence over here. Again, yes, point to note, it's important for the learners to understand that they do not <coughs> end up writing an entire sentence. It's a word or a phrase. They should know what constitutes a word or a phrase and not a sentence. That's again, very, very important. A phrase doesn't necessarily have a finite verb. So the basic, you know, understanding of grammar is again very important over here. Otherwise, you end up writing full sentence and that's wrong, right? So we cannot expect our learners to work and function like that. Because again, if you look at the question, they're clearly not only bold, in bold type phrase, but also underlined, which suggests the same idea as the words underlined. Nothing more, nothing less. That's important. Now, question two, B, there are, which are not taken up in, in, in this slide over here. Are two questions uh, yes. while you, go, uh, you proceed further. Uh, one, the first question is from Ms. Uh, uh, Arora. She asked, should we mention the line number? Uh, because uh, that is usually done in, uh, one second, uh, in the lower secondary. Uh, no, no, no. no, we will not mention any line number over here. I, do, do you mean to ask while getting the question paper or you want the learners to write the line number when they pick up the answer? I think it is for the learners when they no, write No, answers. no, 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 not at all. You do not need to pick up the line number at all. Not necessary. 
because it's a okay, what okay okay uh, she says while setting the paper no no never that should never be done okay because this is for igcsc in lower secondary checkpoint yes you are right they give the line number but for igcsc never otherwise you are not challenging the learners with the first language competency that's what i mentioned it would be so easy right don't make it because that's not exactly what the board also uh, suggests ci doesn't recommend that at all so let us not encourage that okay, also there is yes yeah sorry sorry please go ahead no no please ask the question yeah yeah, yeah. there is uh, a question do we have to deduct the marks if the answer exceeds the word limit there is no word limit over here if you observe in this question the the instruction doesn't tell me any kind of word limit but yes of course if there are gross errors in spelling uh the entire word or phrase is not there they have written the entire sentence they've actually begun i have some of my some of the learners not in my school but i've seen otherwise as well uh, i have some learners i know i'm aware of who write this these kind of responses beginning with a capital letter as you write a sentence and then with the full stop sorry over there i cannot give you a mark because they expect the teacher to find out okay i have given the answer the word or phrase might be there somewhere in my sentence teacher please find out sorry that's not my job you are supposed to be following the instruction to the t what is expected out of you a word or phrase means a word or phrase not a sentence right okay after this for question number 2b they have word words or phrases picked up from the passage and they ask the learners to write the literal meanings or and other word meanings of that now remember it's always important to write the answer of the particular word or rather the word meaning the same tense that's very very important for example if the, if they talk about say i'm just giving an example okay say uh, suppose completed and ask for the text i believe uh, because of course the answer has to be again in tune with the context in tune with the text what i have read and not otherwise so as for the text i believe that the answer will be say finished but it's just an example okay so completed and the child writes to finish or just finish or say just finishing zero you cannot change the structure or the form of the word or the form of the meaning in which the main word has been asked in the question be very careful with this had the word been completing i have to write finishing i cannot write finish if it is complete then finish the tense structure needs to be adhered to strictly okay now this is a list which might be handy for uh, many of you as i talked about command terms like how do we explain the command terms to our learner that's very important right so what is analyze what is comment the two separate things what is compare what is compare and contrast what is describe so the link will, the recording link will be shared with you after the event but then this is something which we would like to discuss with our learners in the classroom and explain to them when i say explain what what am i expecting basically what am i expecting from my learners sorry i expect from my learners to give a detailed account including reasons or causes and not just you know stand and on lose the held idea that will not help interpret justify to what extent examine so these are some essential command terms that we need to explain because i know this is what it, like most of us don't do we don't talk about command terms but we expect children to understand the command terms and write the responses accordingly okay that's not fair <coughs> these are some basic tips each there are three tips basically over here each part of the question will tell you where to look in the text to work out your answer for example it may say to look at certain lines certain words or the whole passage so please focus that's called you know uh, selected reading to get to get to the uh, crux of your answer and response the second tip generally the questions will get more challenging as you work through so watch out for the instructions designed to help you for example if you are told to use your own words 
or give a certain number of reasons just do that if they ask for two reasons just give those two reasons don't claim a full sentence around it if they asking you to use your own words please please use your own words don't copy paste and the last tip over here there is no need to repeat the whole of the question before beginning your answer that way as i mentioned he means that or it is because is that enough to provide a grammatical introduction to your sentence this will save you time okay no need to write the whole question that's now these are all tips by cai okay so please follow these don't waste your time now we move on to the second part the summary writing section for summary writing for my basic question first why do we need to learn the skills of summarizing so can anyone respond quickly why do you think summary writing should be taught why do you think summary writing is important uh learning to be precise very good learning to be precise they learn how to Go consolidate uh, understanding the main ideas to synthesize the ideas uh, okay. how to sum up okay. communicate clearly and quickly okay. Uh, okay. to see how much the learner is understood uh, understand keywords mm -hmm. identify the most important ideas pick the key ideas oh never It, mind yes uh something which i was also expecting uh, uh, was to develop the skills of controlled writing you know our learners at times are totally clueless about controlling their writing they will still say 120 so what is the word limit for summary writing task in igcc 120 words for first language english it's 120 words we cannot exceed a single word beyond the 120 limit <coughs> now what will happen if you write 121 words can anyone tell me what will happen if you exceed one word which will lead to self penalization of course Because examiner uh, self penalization it won't be corrected it won't be read after 120 words and that's exactly why the learners have to be strongly trained to write the word count at the end of the summary exercise at the end of the summary response uh it, while many of you i'm aware might be teaching english at the lower secondary checkpoint as well okay so if you have gone through the marks scheme it clearly mentioned over there that if you exceed the word limit even by a single word then 50% of the total mark is deducted i'm sure we do not want that same thing to happen with our igcse kids so nothing of that rule is there in igcse for language english but yes i believe the entire purpose of the summary gets defeated if you cannot control the content of your writing within the specified word count but that's exactly what is expected out of you you may i now some people may ask what if the child writes down say 95 words or 100 words i would say that's fine but then you are still you still have 20 words you know the 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 drawback or the limitation uh, with respect to that is you might there might be a possibility that you have not included a lot of important points which you could still have managed within the next 20 words so to write the summary response adequately effectively and in a concrete manner i think doing justice to the 120 words is extremely crucial okay now i'll take you through in the coming slides some very important steps for summary writing first it's important to read the passage and identify the unknown words of course before this you you may you may have your own standard as well so what i do is i ask uh, learner learners to read the question first it's all right so that they know exactly what points they should be looking for in the summary text like rather in text b so that gives them a proper road map to understand and then mark out the insert is not sent to cambridge the insert is retained by your school exams officer or the igcse coordinator that's it in school basically so please 
allow your learners freely to mark out points, to highlight, to use color uh, pens and pencils to mark out points and ideas and uh, phrases on the insert. No problem. But please ensure highlighters and colored pencils should not be used on the question paper in which they are writing the responses. That should be noted. Okay. Guessing from the context, these are some of the uh, four uh, elements that will help you to identify the unknown words. The syllabic breakdown, recognition of similarity to another English word. They could be, you know, words which are not uh, derived from English language, or maybe uh, they have some similarity to other English language. Recognition of similarity to another word in another language and guessing from the context. So these are again, quick fix ways how you can read faster and comprehend faster. What is step two? Underline the keywords. This is scanning. Underline the keywords in the question and return to the passage. So there's double time wastage. Read the question first, read the passage. Okay, that's why the insert is separate loose attachment. Identify and highlight relevant key points of phrases in the passage. It's absolutely allowed. <coughs> what should not be done is avoid examples, repetitions, direct speech, figurative language, and unnecessary trivial details. These things should not be put into a summary response. This is now the transfer to making a plan. Of course, now in the new syllabus, we don't have the 15 points a table where it was in the earlier uh, syllabus, okay? But that's fine. That's not an impediment to our uh, understanding and approaching the question, okay? So what we can do is we can transfer the highlighted material to a list. We can make those, we can uh, number on the insert itself. That's all right for us. You can change the words and phrases into your own words. Mind you, summary writing questions strictly uh, advises that you use your own words. You do not copy paste from the text. So again, an exception to that, keep the technical words intact as they might not be changed. That's allowed. But long phrases should not be lifted. Entire chunk of ideas should not be lifted and copy pasted. That will not make sense. And definitely ensure that there are 10 proper, concrete, relevant points for the content because up to 10 marks are available for the content of your answer and up to five marks for the style and accuracy of language, right? So in the 10 marks, believe me, it's easy to score 15 out of 15 in the summary writing response. 10 points, 10 marks means 10 proper points needed, okay? Now, finally, writing the summary. What should not be done, what should be done while writing a summary, write in an informative style. The summary question is designed in a manner that always asks you, there will always be an informative touch to the summary writing response. Introduction, conclusion, not necessary. Please do not train your learners or don't uh, see to it. I mean, see to it that the learners are not wasting any time in writing an introduction or a conclusion. Come to the point, 120 words. Do not just you know a bit about the bush or dilly dally or hanker after something else. It's not necessary. Okay. So introduction, conclusion, not needed at all in a summary writing task. No heading, no title required. Okay. But definitely what is required is use good, well-defined, complex sentences. That's a must for a summary writing. Do not write in loosely held, simple sentences that entirely kills the child. Otherwise, it will just appear to be, you know, like random points listed and jotted down in sentences one after the other. That will not make for a good reading of a summary text, okay? Do not use direct speech, absolutely not. There might be quotations, there might be maybe eyewitness evidence, or there may be some dialogue which you feel is an important point for your summary. So what should you do? You should know the, again, grammar knowledge comes into practice over here. You should know how to you know, restructure and reframe the direct speech and indirect speech. So use of narration, no, avoid. No commentary. Remember, summary writing is not the place for commentary writing. Writing third person, very, very important. 
we do not write summary in first person or second person many children nowadays have a habit of writing you can do like this they say you do you are over there you know you uh, you you can actually understand you can actually experience this if you do this by you over there they probably they don't mean you as in second person but then that's not allowed okay <coughs> so strict rule for summary writing it should be written in third person and the most important aspect is maintain the same tense all throughout okay check for clarity and concision brevity is a soul of wit it shouldn't be forgotten so be concise we and that's exactly for this we need to arm our learners with a lot of good contextual relevant and appropriate vocabulary they need to know how to structure their sentences they need to know how to articulate their ideas you know well spun thought and not just you know loose strands which should have no meaning even sure good use which of fronted adverbials opening of sentences which should always help them to establish a kind of transition from one sentence to another okay maintain objective stance which is very important and avoid narration or commentary as i mentioned earlier this is a sample question the second thing on november 2020 examination this was text b according to text b what were the challenges that sasha dench experienced during her journey just one aspect asked what were the challenges so as a learner under exam conditions all that i am supposed to do right now read back the text read read the text and identify the features and points where i can understand these are the potential challenges that my character sasha dench experienced now this is in past tense so my summary of course has to be in past tense i cannot write the summary in present i cannot say sasha experienced it. then then she goes over there and she finds no it's in past tense so remember these are some very basic necessities or uh, to get the highest band descriptor your summary should not be more than 120 words it should be in continuous piece of writing not note making this is very very crucial and use your own words absolutely they have written that in bold type face that particular face use your own words so they strictly mean that and as i mentioned up to 10 marks for the content 5 marks for the quality of writing so in quality of writing uh now somebody will ask sir if what happens if the child exceeds the word limit but all the 10 points are there fine right, fair enough give marks for all the 10 points give 10 if all the points are genuinely there okay as per your marks scheme or as per your uh, rubric okay but for the five mark quality of writing please uh, lower the marks it might get at uh, two maximum two or three because he has not followed he or she has not followed the rule the instruction right so the quality of writing is not that good so in the language part you can definitely uh, penalize a child that's fine and one a thumb rule during the school level examinations please be very strict in marking don't give out marks otherwise they feel that oh my teacher is giving me marks from the beginning of grade 9 from the beginning of grade 8 and i know i'm you know an expert in summary writing on this particular task and then in i just see grade 10 maybe in the prelims i suddenly score low and i'm 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 just baffled so let that not let that impression not be given to the learners you know that there should be a gradual progression of development shown this is the final activity for today this is a uh, one exercise which is very helpful you can actually practice with your learners you can make a worksheet out of it just ask give them sentences and see the instruction is try to use no more than 10 words for each sentence so can we have responses quickly let's let, let's try out for the second one i know we don't have time to do all but let's try with the second one of course i'll be uh, sharing this Uh, PPT with all of you as well. The recording. So let's have response for the second one. Ensure that you write the summary in not more than ten words. Now this is a challenge. You know, children love these things. You can type out in the chat box. Ashwini can't tell. Let me know if you get responses. Sure. I'm just waiting for responses. Yeah. Uh, my grandfather is sociable. Uh, next is Miss Shweta. She says, 
oh my goodness quite a few responses my grandfather is uh, my 80 year old father likes to socialize uh, my father aged 80 loves socializing he is a social animal uh, my octogenarian granddad is social and outgoing excellent i was waiting for that now see that is what you use your vocabulary skills my octogenarian grandfather it's okay not to use granddad because over here we're doing dad's father my dad's father means my grandfather right nearly 80 years old now somebody mentioned my 80 year old grandfather now 80 year old grandfather can still be reduced to octogenarian one word so these like uh so we have all the hexagenarian septagenarian uh octogenarian okay so we have these ages so my octogenarian grandfather loves to socialize Despite being 80, my father loves to meet close okay, acquaintances. Okay, it's not my father, it's grandfather. My grandfather. Okay, they've written uh, my father. Comprehensive uh, skills, huh? Uh, my grandfather, a gregarious old man, loves to socialize. Okay. Gregarious. Uh, okay. Okay, my 80-year-old father. Okay, that's again a similar yeah. answer. So see, if you use your vocabulary, and these sentences are absolutely challenging. The learners are uh, thought process, the critical thinking. They are actually looking, hunting for words, the hunting for vocabulary. And you do this with the learners and you see how well they understand the summary writing task. If you look at the first sentence, at the end of the working week, now what does that mean? That means over the weekend. End of the working week means weekend. Over the weekend, so I'm reducing my word. When it's got dark and the stars are coming out, that means over weekend nights or during starry weekend nights. See, I'm reducing everything by proper use of adjectives. I like to just sit back, have a long cool drink and watch some of the nonsense that's in television. So I, I like to relax with a drink and watch uh, and I sit in front of the idiot box. So I'm you know, encapsulating the idea of nonsense on television, idiot box. So over starry weekend nights, I relax over a drink and sit before the idiot box. But just check if there are 10 words. You can still strike out words and condense them into the 10 words. Now these exercises, if you do a couple of times in the classroom with the learners, they will get some writing skills like this. Because now at the back of their mind, what is hammering is 10 words, 10 words. And they enjoy, you know, with the peer learning as well. Let's see whether you've got 10 words or not, because I've got nine words. But ma'am, ma I'm still getting 11 words. So what do I do? Reduce one word or maybe even two words if it makes sense. So these exercises are really helpful to get that kind of, you know, uh, uh, enhancement of skill process or exercises for summary task. Advice to candidates, this is on the examiner report. Reread -read text B after reading the question to identify potentially relevant ideas. Plan your response using brief notes, but then remember the notes should not be written in the answer paper, but there is no space. The notes can be mentioned in the insert while you're marking and highlighting. Avoid including unnecessary details which do not address the question. It's a must requirement. Because you will get no points, you will just be wasting your words and your space and time. Organize the ideas, grouping them where relevant to ensure that your response is coherent. So organization of ideas is extremely important. Again, you cannot just loosely put the ideas and words in bits and pieces. Again, avoid repeating ideas. Write clearly and make sure you express yourself fluently in your words and not copy paste the ideas. Do not add comments or your own views. Summary writing exercise is not the place to write your own reflection, mind you. It should be informative. The style should be informative. It's not a reflective piece. You are not going to add any additional opinions on the basis of your understanding. Some, some children do. They read the text and they don't bother to look back at the text okay, to find out the information. And they get, develop their own ideas and write on their own. No. That's not how it's supposed to be done. You will not get any marks because the 10 points, you will not be able to justify that, right? Try to keep to the guidance to write no more than 
120 watts. It's extremely crucial. And last but not the least, this is the marking criteria. As I mentioned, the overview, the assessment criteria. For convenience, I have highlighted the keywords that out of 10, for 10 marks for the content, these are the elements that you must keep in mind to ensure that you write a good summary and not you know, digressing or maybe being too opinionated or mentioning ideas or points which are not necessary or maybe even write, going on a narrative stance. So such thing, or maybe writing first person which is not required, giving a giving us some kind of introduction or a conclusion which is not necessary at all because you have not been asked, summary writing is not the place for writing introduction and conclusion, okay? And this is the rubric for the five marks which are for your a language, the quality of writing, style and accuracy of language. So yes, a relevant purpose, the response needed, candidates' own words, well-organized and well-chosen vocabulary. Of course, we are all aiming for the highest level, level three, which will give you five or a four, so a lower three or an upper three, which is five, and lower three is four. So these are the parameters which we must consider while we are uh, preparing for the summary writing task. And of course, eventually, uh, when we talk about comprehension as such. So as I mentioned, comprehend reading skills, fast reading skills, analyzing, understanding the keywords, understanding the command terms, extremely important. These are some useful links and resource sites that I have shared over here. You can actually give them uh, to your students as well. The, uh, the third link is extremely important or rather it's very you know, interesting because I found the entire paper one has been actually worked out uh, by this resource person again, a very kind man, Ashley. So he worked out the entire paper one. He typed out the response and showed how to get those kind of responses in the stipulated uh, time. This is summary writing exercise as well and a PDF uh, for handouts as well. So this might find, uh, you might find them extremely useful. I always end my webinar with this amazing quote because this is a metacognition uh, which we need to teach our learners in the classroom and to practice in our classrooms uh, quite, you know, quite explicitly at times. The curriculum tells us what and not how. The how is basically the artistry in education. So, but while you're talking about connotations, annotations, in our earlier Collins webinars, we've already talked about at length to refer to the Collins Dictionary. So I know we are all still working online, remote learning, still this year with the virtual, still. Uh, I try to send the Collins uh, ebook login details on the WhatsApp groups. Uh, those who are in this forum on my WhatsApp groups, you know what I share. And uh, yes, asking the learners to actually look up for the words and develop the language and vocabulary on the collinsdictionary.com actually helps. I have done it in my class and I've been doing it for the past three years now. Believe me, I have seen the kind of development in my learners who have been teaching for the past three years and now they're in grade 10 in the same school and I've seen the difference. So I can speak from my own experience. This is the Collins Dictionary. If you want to procure a hard copy for yourself, it's absolutely amazing. And let me tell you, even the learners can procure a copy for themselves, even flipping to the pages and helping them to understand the format of the word, the structure of the word, the, the, the phonetic transcription of the word, the syllabic, you know, I talked about somewhere when we talk about words, the syllabic breakdown, the syllabic breakdown of the words, how to pronounce a particular word, what could be the connotation? You know, it could be having some kind of uh, based on gender, based on race, based on uh, taste and preferences and likes and dislikes, even to understand the writer's effects. So overall comprehension is well understood. So they have given you sentences, framed sentences with these words, okay, to help you understand. Well, on that note, thank you so much. In case you want to reach out to Collins, please email uh, school support at harpercollins.co.in in case you want to reach out to me. My email ID is abhinandan.cie at gmail.com. So you can reach out to me any moment. I'll definitely uh, get back to you with whatever resources I can. So great. On that note, I say uh, thanks to all of you for being patient enough to sit through the entire session. Thank you so much, Abhinandan. 
yeah uh it was a wonderful webinar uh in fact uh the audience i think were very very communicative very very interactive there was a lot of uh i mean uh conversation within the audience uh, a lot of uh, teachers helping other uh, teachers understand certain nuances so i think that was a great way to uh, communicate uh, using the chat and uh, abhinandan it's always a pleasure to hear you uh while you're at your best during your webinars so uh, again uh, all the teachers uh, they also uh, there's certain teachers who are asking how do we get the recording so uh, my name is shrikant and i'm uh, sharing an email id of a colleague of mine mr uh, manish bagul uh, so please uh, please use this email id uh, to send in your emails and mr manish would be really happy uh to share the recording link and uh, in case any teacher wants to reach out to uh, school support at harpercollins.com you can also mail it there and we'll be happy uh, to share the links so uh, ms rita desai is asking we would like to be a part of the whatsapp group i think mr abhinandan can answer that absolutely i can of course yeah so uh, in case you have my uh, email id and my contact number some of you might be having so you can just reach out to me over there i'll uh, add you to the whatsapp groups so there is a lot of learning happening over there yes absolutely yes so i think uh, that's a great way of sharing and uh, also communicating with uh, each other in terms of knowledge and information so with that we'd like to thank all of you uh, for uh, joining us uh, in this uh, wonderful uh, uh, evening and also afternoon because i see a, a, a lot of uh, uh uh attendance from uh, overseas uh so thank you so much do we have and, all the uh, participants from india or we have from abroad as well uh, we do have uh, quite a few participants from overseas oh wow that's interesting Great. yes yes <laughs> so uh thank you so much and uh, wish you all a great afternoon and an evening thank you